up with y'all, man? Good peace, good vibes, good all that. How we doing today? We out here at the farm. Gonna get this transplant Tuesday in, you know what I'm saying? We got some turnips right here, so we gonna get ready to plant some turnips in the bed that we got going over there. We can plant it some beets. You know, this is the, uh, this is the root crop. Um, we already even got up in here and everything, you know what I'm saying? You got some shots in here, but this is, this is the hoop house. The garden house, man, uh, it's looking nice up in here. Like, shoot, about three weeks ago, these things was was tiny. They was all just getting transplanted. And look at what it's done. This is what nature does for you. But um, yeah, we gonna we gonna step up what we do. Right now, into the bed, we What's got poppin'? some turnips. Uh, what else we got going over here? Got some turnips. Got some turnips. Beets. Got some beets. Got some beets. Okay. You know what I'm saying being in the soil. Transplanting right now. You know what I'm saying? We transplant some turnips. <laughs> you know, a few months ago, this was a few months ago, we, we got all the greens up over here. Man, it's looking, man, it's looking so good up over here. Now we harvesting, we eating fresh lettuce, you know, whenever we need it. We coming and picking the lettuce straight from the Safe from the soil, good soil, good earth, mother earth. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very nice. What we got up over here, more greens. We got some, some squash up over here growing. Can't wait for this to come up. This is, man, when we get this, it's gonna be good. We got some amaranth growing right here. Just random amaranth. That thing is sprung too. Man, that thing was not that big last week. Wow. That's the amaranth. Hey, another day at the farm. This is this is what we do. I'm just trying to get your attention. I've been living in all the kitchen. Swear I'm loving this life. I'm this is all you need. We got a ruler. I don't, I don't know the specific names. I'm not yeah, there yet all the way, are. but you know, we're working with it. Just, I know it gets the job. So, we're going to go ahead and transplant. Turn it. Your frequency food, I'm on a whole nother level. Eating fruit with a seed, that other stuff on the devil. Only vegetable eating. Processed, I won't settle. It's coming straight from the earth. Gotta dig it out with a shovel. These are fours, okay. So what we doing? I didn't. I didn't place the first hole. We just, we just plotting out and setting where we gonna put each turnip at. These ones are going four by four, so four inches by four inches, four inches diagonal, four inches horizontally. Right, what you working on? You doing some turnips? These fours are gonna be tight. Okay. I'm gonna just plot out this first row real quick, measure it all out. What you do is, you, know, you kind of squeeze the bottom just to loosen it up a little bit. And you give it a turn just to give it that push, and you slightly pull it out at the same time. Bam, there you got it. Everything's all together, the soil's in there, you know. So what I do is, this little method I got from, from the God, Kenoke himself. A nice method that I'm still trying to get down. So all we gonna do, come out a diagonal right here. You know, we get that in there. As soon as, you know, I pull it up, I just, bam, go ahead and just alternate and drop it right in. So, bam, do that, and then you just cover around it. And bam, you got your transplanted turnip. Simple as that. Get the job done, you repeat, do it all over. We're gonna throw it one more time. Diagonal. 
Tuesday. All right, so I'm watering here. I got the uh, I'm watering here with the uh, I got some rainbow chard here. Got uh, Malabar spinach, and this is the final touch after we get everything planted. Just to go ahead and put some water on it. It's in the middle of the day. It's not usually the best time to be transplanting, but we're gonna work it out. All this stuff here has got a shade cloth on it. Some of these root crops, they're starting to get a little bit droopy. So we throw a shade cloth on them. To kind of keep down the sunshine down on them. Once we're done with this, I'll put the uh, drip irrigation back on it. We'll be set. So um, once I'm finished watering here, we're gonna put some straw on top of that. The straw is this little brown stuff here. The straw is gonna act like a mulch. And basically what the mulch is gonna do is the mulch is going to um, block the sun so the soil can stay wet for longer, trap the moisture in, and it'll also cut down on the weeds because if you can't see the soil, neither can the sun and neither can the weeds but the plants will be protected, so we all good. Ooh, got some peppers in this thing. <laughs> bell peppers. Sweet bell peppers, you know what I'm saying? Just the life, just the life, you know what I'm saying? Getting this straw real quick. What you about to do with it? Throw it on this bed over here, cover it up. Like the rest of these ones, they're getting it. Y'all can see, this is the process. Getting that, getting that good protection from the sun. talk about <laughs> hey have you ever have you ever had them uh um the mexican suckers that uh turn it to the strawberry at the end yeah, or the watermelon <laughs> yeah the water yeah the mango they had a mango and the yeah, watermelon it had the little spices on it yeah that's what it smelled like oh yeah the, hey, the watermelon one yeah oh, bussin the store and buy I used to get those all the time too though. I liked yeah. the mango ones though. Oh yeah, the mango ones was good. I never liked them like that. Ooh, the watermelon ones. The watermelon ones and then there was... Oh, what's those? Those are the mango ones, the one that looked like... You want they, the shape was like, kind of like... Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, no, yeah. okay, yeah, those was, bro. Why are you thinking those too? Second guessing, ain't no time for that. I'm worried about my health, you worried about the stack. Ain't from nature, that's what's gonna last. That's it. Process, cover it up, get the uh, get it some shade from the sun so that the the wheat the weeds won't be growing, protect the soil so it won't dry out, get them buds coming up and being active. You know the FBI. So, get that What's the smell. FBI? The FBI, the vertebrates. No, the invertebrates, mm -hmm. the fungi and the bacteria, and they FBI because they work in secret under the ground. Y'all don't know what's going on, but they working on that dirt. <laughs> you said that's what, Jimmy? Oh, I'm messing around. <laughs> so here, um, I got my hands a few packets of okra, red burgundy okra. If you don't know about okra, okra came over here with the slaves. So it's one of our indigenous crops. And so what's so important to understand is that this, this package of seeds probably has about uh, let's see, I'll probably say about 50 to 75 seeds in it. It's a dollar sixty-nine for a package of these. Well, one seed, one plant will produce probably around 75 to 50 okra. And within each okra is about 20 to 30 seeds. 
So just taking one of these packets and planting one pack, one plant will give you not only okra to eat, but enough to be able to save hundreds of seeds. And so then you can turn around and plant those seeds in the ground and eat the fruit, but then you can also plant the seeds too. So it's just one of those things that are very important to grow your own food. Here I'm standing next to some Ethiopian kale that are ready, to, pretty much ready. Ooh, they're pretty much ready to harvest. I'm saving those seeds too as well. And the thing is, is I don't have to go to the store for any more okra. Every single year that I grow okra, I'll be able to save my crops. And it's just like a perpetual motion. And there's something so empowering with you being able to put some seeds in the ground and then being able to feed yourself, feed your family, feed your community, feed your friends. That, you know, when we start talking about real revolution, revolution has to do with the land. And not only just having the land, but being able to produce something on the land. And no matter where you go on this planet, or any time when you look at a revolution, it's always been about land and what we're gonna do with the land. So right now we live in the ghettos. The ghettos have acres and acres of empty lots that we can be growing food on. And not only growing food, but feeding our communities, feeding our families, feeding our women, feeding our children. And then we can put our money together and we can start to purchase property. And then when we become the property owners in our neighborhoods and we start to own our communities, then we'll have a voice that's powerful and strong. So let's get back to the land, let's get back to the seeds, and let's get back to growing our own destiny.